I want to show you how to capture input from the user of your application and I'll be doing it by means of this form. And you'll also see how to use some of these extra controls that we can place onto a form. Before I do, let me just show you a quick and easy way we can capture input from the user by means of the input box function. I'll drop a button on the form first, give it a name and the text property. Double click to write the code. The input box function will capture one piece of data. Specifically, it'll capture a string. I'll need a variable to put that piece of data into. So let's declare a string variable first of all. And then I can assign a value to it by means of the input box function, just like this. And to prove it works, I'll output the contents of that variable. I'm concatenating the word hello in front of it. Let's give it a try. Press the button to launch the procedure. And there's the input box prompt. Please enter your first name. And that's working fine. So it's a quick and easy way to prompt the user for some input. But what I really want to talk about in this video is how we can use controls on the form to capture input. So I'm going to delete the code you can see here and do something else instead. Let's go back to the form. I'm going to place a text box on the form. Here it is in the control toolbox. I'll give the text box a name. Notice at the moment it's called text box one. I've prefixed the new name with txt to indicate that it's a text box and then I'm calling it first name because that's the data I want to capture. I'm trying to keep the name meaningful. Notice the camel notation as well. You'll see the benefit of doing it this way in a few moments. I'm also going to put a label on the form so that the user of the form knows what to type into the text box. Here's the label control. And again, I'm going to change its name to keep it meaningful. LBL for a label, and then something to indicate its purpose. A label also has a text property, which I'm going to change. And you can see that is what appears on the form. While I'm at it, I'm going to add another text box to capture the user's last name. and the matching label, and one more text box to capture the user's gender. Notice that a text box also has a text property, but anything I type in here will actually appear in the text box. It will become the default data if a user doesn't type something into the text box. I'm going to leave it blank and we'll have another matching label to go with this text box. There are a couple of things you need to be aware of when you're placing controls on the form. Each control must have a unique name. So this one, you can see I called it TXT first name. There's the name property. And this one I called TXT last name. Let me just make the mistake of giving this text box the same name as the other one and see what happens. Property value is not valid. Take a look at the details and it's telling me that the name is already in use by another component. Something else on the form has already been called txt first name. If this happens, just cancel and find out which one is the offending control. Something else I should mention is you can't have spaces in a control name, so let's put a space in this text box name. Again, an error message. And maybe I'll even try putting a question mark on the end of the name. Another error message. 
So there are some limitations as to what you can call a text box or indeed any other control on the form. The text property, on the other hand, of a label or a button can be pretty much anything you like. OK, let's just tidy up the layout a little bit. I'm watching the guidelines for assistance. And you can also use the format menu to help you control the layout of a form. See, I have options for alignment, horizontal and vertical spacing. This one is particularly handy. If I select all of these text boxes, I can say I want to make them all the same width, for example, and I can make them all the same height. If I want to move things around as a group, I just draw a box around them to highlight them, and I can drag them to a new position. You can play around with the various tools available to improve the cosmetic appearance of your form when you have time, but for now I just want to show you how we can capture some data. So let's write the code for the button. I'm going to start by declaring three variables into which I'm going to load the data that I capture. I'm using a standard naming convention again, ST because these are string variables, and then of course something meaningful in camel notation. I've just spotted a spelling mistake as well, let's fix this. Now I'm going to take the information that the user types onto the form and load it into these variables. Starting with the first name. ST first name equals a single equal sign means I'm about to assign something to this variable and the information I want is on the form in a text box called txt first name. I've just typed the first three characters of the text box name txt and I'm being presented with a list of the text boxes on the form. You can see why I use this naming convention. As long as I make sure that all of my text boxes begin with txt I'll get a nice little list of them. So I'll select txt first name and I want to take the text property, in other words the text that the user typed into that text box and I'm going to load that into my variable. So this reads as take the text from the text box called txt first name and assign it to that variable. Let's do the same with the other variables. And finally, I'm going to output the data in a message box, just to make sure it worked. I've included a space between the first name and the last name. And I've concatenated some extra text in my message as well. Let's see what happens when we run it then. Type in some information. And there's the output from my procedure. If I dismiss the message box, the application is still running, so I can change the data here. The program is assigning new values to those variables, overwriting the existing ones. One more time. So there you have it capturing data from a user by means of text boxes on a form. Let's quickly take a look at another control which I can use on a form. I want to show you a list box. And I'm going to use this to capture the user's occupation. So let's give it a name. LST occupation. LST because it's a list box. I'll put a label on the form to go with it so that the user knows what the list box is for. And I'm going to include some occupations in the list box that the user can choose from. First of all, make sure that the list box is actually selected and then use the items property. 
there's a little button here which will allow me to add a collection of items. Click OK and I now have a populated list box. Let's capture the user's selection. I need a variable to store it in and I can capture the user's selection in a slightly different way. I'm using the selected item property. Let's try it out. Hello Kevin Drum, you are a male teacher. I can also add items to the list box programmatically, in other words, in my code. I'll quickly show you this and then you can experiment with it yourself. You might remember in an earlier video I showed you how you could write code when the form loads. I'm going into the form design environment and I'll double click the form itself. I now have a procedure called form one load. Any code I write here will run immediately after I start the application but before the form appears on the screen. And I'm going to add some extra code to put a few more items into my list box. I am adding something to the collection of items which are inside that list box. I'm just going to make sure that the list box is big enough to display everything. And let's give it a try. Hello Beatrix Potter, you are a female writer. 